I think I saw a ghost. Is this place haunted? Travel coast to coast to discover chilling tales of America's most mysterious haunted lighthouses. The uh, spirit of the last lightkeeper probably exists here. A Florida lighthouse leaves you wondering what's real and what's imagined. I do know that there was, there was life and death in that room. With a mummy in the basement and a ghost on the prowl, this Great Lakes lighthouse serves up a bizarre tale. What's going on here? Here's a mummified cat, and needless to say, it really scared me. A heart-sick spirit finds no peace on the rugged Pacific coast. Pacita Head is well known for the ghost. She seems to be searching for something, and possibly it's, it's the child she lost. A rocky cliff in Maine sets the scene for the past coming back to life. Sometimes when they die, the spirit stays behind. And I think there's a keeper at Owl's Head. Light plays tricks, and shadows can deceive, but people know what they've seen. I've seen the real deal. <laughs> I'm very convinced it was a ghost. Definitely it was a ghost. Prepare for a hair-raising tour of the unknown. Something is going on. I was touched by the ghost. Discover chilling tales of mysterious haunted lighthouses. Haunted lighthouses are not always dark and brooding. Many are in the most spectacular locations imaginable. Hasita Head, Oregon's most stunning lighthouse, is no exception. About a three-hour drive from Portland, past miles of awe-inspiring beaches and rugged Oregon coast, this remarkable beacon is majestic, like the scenery itself. Hasita Head Lighthouse and Keeper's Quarters perch magically atop a giant wedge of rock jutting into the Pacific. But magic can harbor a darker side, a mysterious dimension where the unexplained offers no easy answers and raises many disturbing questions. It's the Keeper's Quarters here where most of the questions arise, ones that give Hasita Head its reputation of being a very haunted light station. Restored to its original 1894 splendor, the Queen Anne-style Keeper's Quarters has been turned into a bed and breakfast, open to the public. Guests experience a rare treat with an elaborate seven-course gourmet breakfast served daily. This is Eggs Benedict with sautéed shallots, fresh asparagus, Kalamata olives and Parmesan Reggiano cheese. Another rare treat here is something most guests haven't bargained for. Over the elegant breakfast table, some have told of a strange visitor to their room, a brush with a mysterious ghost known as Rue. And the mystery begins with an abandoned grave. According to the legend, uh, there was a lightkeeper's wife who uh, lost her only child. Uh, the girl drowned out in the cistern or was lost in the ocean and uh, the mother was distraught with grief and uh, killed herself. There's actually an unmarked grave out here somewhere for the child. I believe that this area in here uh, is where the gravesite is. But no one claims to know for certain where the child is buried. Even the young girl's name is unknown. But many here believe both mother and child are an inseparable part of Hasita Head's tragic history. There's the history of someone dying, and then there are the experiences with the ghost. And generally speaking, the experiences with the ghost uphold the historical background very well. I think the legend goes back to the tenure of Frank and Jenny DeRoy. Uh, she came as a young woman. She probably uh, lost a child during that time. The interesting thing, this is the, the part that really gets me, is that the people who have the most intense experiences with the ghost were the people who came in skeptic at first. Like myself, they came in disbelieving the ghosts were possible. Hasita Head is well known for the ghost. Uh, other people that have come in don't believe in it, and I'm sure that they leave still not believing in it. I don't think she shows up for everybody. As I saw her, I would have swore that she was human. I would put her at the very turn of the century, the early 1900s. And I have seen her. She seems to be searching for something, and possibly it's, it's the child she lost. 
or possibly the child's grave. And Rue's search keeps leading back to the house where she herself may have once lived. One of my worst experiences was in the attic. And I didn't know where the light switch was at this point. I was uh, a new employee here and I had to go up there. It was enough to make me gather my cool and walk all the way across the attic with my lighter out. You can see 15 feet across the room and on the opposite wall was a face. And when I got there, it wasn't a face any longer. It was just the wall. There was nothing there. But I swear that first moment I saw it, there was a clear as day face staring at me. The best known sighting of her um, came when there was a workman up in the attic doing some repairs and he was at a window. This is probably where it happened in the attic, uh, perhaps at this window. In contrast to the disturbing encounters in the attic, most residents, past and present, enjoy memories of Rue as a friendly spirit, a welcome companion in the house. It really didn't ever bother me. It almost made me, I don't know, it was almost a comforting feeling at times. I'd be sitting in a room, I could feel just a slight breeze and sort of a chill would go down my back and I knew that she was there. No, no, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me at all. I feel very comfortable with it. Whatever the spirit is, it really appreciates the fact that there's things going on here. It could definitely be a very spooky and decrepit old place if it was allowed to be. I haven't seen uh, Rue in broad daylight uh, floating towards me, which seems to be the, you know, the proof that everybody wants. But I have seen a lot of things out of the corner of my eyes, and uh, I've, I've experienced strange things here in the house as well. Uh, it's for the best that I haven't seen her because I have to live here. Perched on a rocky shelf near the top of spectacular Hasita Head, the lighthouse keeper's quarters is open for tours. Call ahead to book an overnight stay, and don't forget to ask for the haunted bedroom. Just to the north of the Yaquina Bay Beacon is the lighthouse that replaced it over a hundred years ago. Yaquina Head Lighthouse is Oregon's tallest throwing its light 19 miles out to sea. Since it was first lit in 1871, rumors have persisted that the lighthouse on Yaquina Head is haunted. A keeper in the 1930s wrote, someone unseen would come in and go up the spiral stairs on certain dark nights. That keeper believed he lived with a ghost in his tower for 22 years, sometimes following close behind the wraith as it wound its way up to the lantern room. He heard it on the stairs most every night, but never caught a glimpse. Since the beacon is now automated, a keeper no longer maintains the light. But staff and visitors have reported hearing unexplained sounds in the tower. Most recently, a lighthouse volunteer. I came in this morning by myself. Usually there are two of us. I heard voices, like maybe a man and a woman talking very, very softly. I was just curious, where is that sound coming from? I still don't know. Nothing was there, nothing. Nobody but me and the voices. While some officials try to squash the ghostly rumors, some locals persist believing the spirit of an old keeper still rattles around 
somewhere inside the Yaquina Head Tower. I am not going to put myself in the position of saying it is haunted, but it could be. On summer days, when Yaquina Head Lighthouse is open to the public, climb the 93-foot tower. And somewhere on your way up the cast iron stairs, stop and listen. Have it your way. The rugged beauty of Oregon's colossal coast comes wild or haunting. An ideal spot to daydream or just cut loose. Just a hundred miles from Portland, it's a great getaway. An enchanting place to play or let the imagination run free. And what can stir the imagination like a lonely lighthouse perched high on a bluff overlooking the Pacific? The perfect spot for a good old-fashioned ghost story. I think that people um, love ghost stories um, and particularly lighthouse ghosts. The isolation and the lonely spots that they're typically in sort of lends itself to ghost stories getting started. Lighthouses are romantic and ghosts are romantic. Built in 1871, the service of Yaquina Bay Lighthouse is one of the briefest on record. In less than three years, it was replaced by a taller beacon a mile to the north at Yaquina Head. The little beacon on the bay was abandoned and neglected for many years. That it survived at all has been called miraculous. Yaquina Bay Lighthouse is wrapped in tantalizing history and tormented by tragedy. It's said to be possessed by a chilling legend of a mystery sealed inside. Some believe a strange disappearance clouds its past. Handed down by generations of sailors and keepers, it's an astonishing lighthouse tale that unfolds like a turn-of-the-century whodunit. Whether it's true or not, we don't know, but we have a lot of versions that indicate that something happened here after the lighthouse was abandoned, someone disappeared, and it's quite a mystery. A mystery that has spawned volumes of intriguing lighthouse lore got its start in 1899 with a magazine story called The Haunted Light. Fact or fiction? Who knows for sure? But the story is dark and disturbing. A pretty teenage girl disappears in broad daylight at Yaquina Bay Lighthouse. The author asks how she could have wandered into harm's way unnoticed and disappeared without a trace. Travel back in time to the late 1800s. Sixteen-year-old Muriel Trevenard is spending the summer sailing the Oregon coast with her father, a sea captain. Muriel and her father put in at the tiny seashore town of Yaquina Bay, where she plans to spend the week with friends while he sets out again on his own. The following morning, Muriel and her companions take off for a picnic on the cliffs surrounding Yaquina Bay Lighthouse. Passing the beacon, Muriel is enchanted, drawn to the lighthouse as though a voice inside is calling her name. But there is no voice. The lighthouse is abandoned. What happened next is one of the strangest mysteries in lighthouse history. Records from that time give us no clue as to Muriel's fate. But one thing appears certain. Muriel Trevenard disappeared forever. Or did she? There are reports that, that her spirit still roams here. We don't know where she went bodily, what happened to her, but 
it seems as if it was a tragedy, whatever it was, and perhaps her spirit remains on uh, to solve that mystery. I had heard the story or the legend of the of Muriel. I had a friend visiting from out of state and we were just passing through the park looking at the sights. I was driving and we both kind of glanced up at the lighthouse up uh, where the beacon is and we saw this um, white ephemeral shape just kind of floating by the windows at the top. I told her then the story that it was supposed to be a haunted lighthouse and um, she confirmed we probably saw the ghost. A trick of light or a spirit on the roam? Witnesses at Yaquina Bay say what they've seen might not be real, but they swear it's Muriel. I um, frequently hear stories um, about ghostly experiences that people have had. One of my favorites actually was um, a couple that I met uh, here visiting the lighthouse one day told me the story of their daughter's wedding. Uh, they said that um, during the wedding they had their daughter come down the stairs in her wedding gown and they took pictures. And that when they got the pictures developed, there was a ghostly image in the photo behind uh, her daughter that looked like a woman. They thought it was Muriel. I was pretty astounded that I actually got to see her. I think I saw a ghost. A visit to Yaquina Bay Lighthouse can start the imagination working overtime. But don't let the unearthly tale about this friendly lighthouse ghost be forbidding. Tours of the lighthouse are offered year-round, and while you enjoy the sights in one of America's most scenic coastal communities, keep your eyes peeled. For a fleeting moment, you may catch a glimpse into Muriel's mysterious world and witness a part of the secret history of this haunted lighthouse. Of all the enchanting lighthouses on the rocky coast of Maine, one stands out for its dramatic location and intriguing ghostly legends. But ghosts or no ghosts, Owl's Head Lighthouse is so far from the ordinary, some say it's out of this world. There are a lot of stories here that are unexplainable. I definitely say Owl's Head is one of Maine's haunted lighthouses. To find the pine-covered cliffs of Owl's Head, journey up the Atlantic coast, an hour north of Portland, Maine, straight through the heart of lobster country and into the mystic realm of Maine lighthouses. Since 1896, Curtis Island Lighthouse has welcomed boaters into Maine's Camden Harbor, where world-famous seal Andre made a name for himself. Curtis Island is also a bird sanctuary, but as far as anyone knows, not a refuge for ghosts. Finally, a beacon both picturesque and legendary comes into view. Owl's Head is home to a treasure trove of mysterious lighthouse lore. Its name remains a mystery. Perhaps early explorers imagined the eyes and beak of an owl in the rocky outcroppings. Whatever they saw is not evident today. But the age-old mystery at this lighthouse still lingers and goes far beyond its name. Over the years, I've had a lot of keepers tell me stories about Owl's Head. And one of them is, of course, the mystery of the footprints. It's been told to me many, many times over that mysterious footprints appear, especially after a light rain. And the mystery is they only go one direction. They come up the ramp, they go up the stairs, and they get to the tower. And then if you continue on, you will find that the brass has been cleaned and the lens has been cleaned. Now that is a mystery. To me, it is possible that the presence of a lighthouse keeper could still be uh, in some form still present at a lighthouse after his death uh, because they were so uh, emotionally tied in with those places. I don't know the explanation, but it's, it's not that much of a leap of imagination to me to think that in some form they would uh, hang around to take care of that light. Sometimes when they die, their spirit stays behind. And I think there's a keeper at Owl's Head. 
If the spirit of a long-gone lighthouse keeper shows up at Owl's Head on occasion, no one seems surprised. But a family who once lived in the keeper's quarters was more than a little startled at finding a ghost in their child's bedroom. I'm very fascinated by uh, the story of uh, Debbie Graham and her husband, uh, Gerard, who were here in the 80s, and uh, they had a small daughter who uh, experienced uh, some unusual things. We really never felt anything until we were started, you know, started paying attention to my younger child. She'd wake up in the middle of the night, and she would meet her dad at the top of the stairs, and she'd tell her daddy to turn on the foghorn. How would a two-year-old know to come and tell her daddy to turn on the foghorn? It really didn't take that long for us to figure out, like, what the heck's going on here, you know? I mean, we've got something in here that's telling her what to do. She always felt the presence of him, and that was in the room that was haunted. Who is this? And that's what I always wanted to know. Who could this be? Why else would a ghost be in that lighthouse if he wasn't a keeper? She was connected. She was there. She was there with the spirit. It was, it was Claire, and, Claire and the ghost. There's been many, many strange things that go on in the house. So I would say that if a little girl has lived in that house, she senses the keeper. It could be his footprints that go up the ramp and up to the tower. He may be the one who's cleaning the brass and who's also cleaning the lens. I do not know what the explanation is for these uh, events at Owl's Head Light, but there seems to be there seems to be a consistency with several of the people who have lived there in the house have experienced very similar events. If I'm in my room listening to the ocean, and I'll just be doing my thing. I always feel like there's somebody there. Sometimes you have a feeling like there's a presence watching over you, and I hate to use the word haunted. I wouldn't say haunted because it's a scary word, but I would say that there are spirits there or there's things happening there that are more than just coincidence. Something is going on. Maybe someday we'll understand it all. Call it a haunted house, or a place where spirits dwell, or perhaps it's just the perfect setting for lively imaginations, inspired by an enchanting lighthouse legend. The keeper's quarters at Owl's Head is a private home. But the lighthouse can be toured by reservation. And the grounds surrounding Owl's Head Lighthouse are open to the public. No one can say when this enchanting main beacon was first suspected of being a haunted lighthouse. Far in the western corner of Florida's Panhandle, Pensacola is much more than a beach town. It's the proud home of the United States Naval Air Station, featuring one of the world's largest aviation museums and the amazing Navy Blue Angels. But Pensacola has a surprise. Its tall, picture-perfect lighthouse appears normal in every respect. But don't be fooled. It may be one of America's most haunted lighthouses. It's a real fine line between your imagination playing with you versus what is really happening. If we got a spirit or two spirits here, you know, apparently they're, they're uh, benign. You know, they're not harmful. Nobody's ever been harmed. Pensacola Lighthouse has stood on duty for nearly 150 years, shining its beam a remarkable 27 miles out to sea. Although the tower rises over a Navy base, it's in the hands of the U.S. Coast Guard, which does a terrific job maintaining it, while rebuffing persistent rumors that the lighthouse is haunted. Everybody likes to think that, uh, you know, just because it's as old as it is, it's been through as much history as it has, there's, there's, there's bound to be ghosts here. We have lots of people who believe very strongly that it is haunted. We have other people who are less, less believers and more skeptical. Locals like to tell the story of a bizarre incident that took place one hot summer night in the late 1800s. A tragedy that might be long forgotten, but for a grim reminder 
left behind. All I can do is tell you what my impressions were, and I do know that there was there was life and death in that room. Apparently it was an argument that uh, occurred between a lighthouse keeper and uh, his wife. She just took a knife to him. Well, I understand it was a murder. This was probably not the first time he had attacked her. Yes, it was murder, but it was, I would call it self-defense. That's where the stain came from, on the floor. As long as this house is standing, as long as that floor is in there, that, that stain's gonna be there. I know they've tried to uh, scrub it. It always comes back. It comes back in the same spot. There's definitely a, an evil, bad feeling in that particular room. An evil, bad feeling along with some century-old blood, seemed to have permanently stained the mood here, as well as the bedroom floor, and marked the beginnings of a series of very strange events. There's definitely a presence here that uh, makes me nervous. January in Florida's panhandle can mean dark nights and freezing temperatures. A few winters ago, when a deep freeze gripped Pensacola, a Navy base plumber scouted for frozen pipes. I made about four circles around the lighthouse here. And uh, every, every time I'd stop to look for the leak, I could feel something in here, somebody walking behind me. I reached down to shut the valve off. I heard something on the front steps by the front door, and I looked up and I thought it was the other gentleman working with me out here. And I says, Ed, I says, are you done yet? All of a sudden, I noticed it wasn't Ed. When I asked him, was he done yet? His response was, I'll never be done. Folks out there can believe what you want to, <laughs> but uh, I, I've seen the real deal. <laughs> I know that this place has spirits. I can only say that now because it had to happen to me personally in order for me to believe it. It was the second Halloween that we had been conducting haunted lighthouse climbs. And um, I was standing right here in my witch's costume. Before I would start them up these stairs, I would say something like, uh, Mr. Lighthouse Keeper, don't scare these people. Um, they're just here to see the lighthouse and then they're gone. And all of a sudden I feel on the back of my right elbow, I've got three distinct taps. And of course I turned to think maybe that somebody was there that needed my assistance, but there was nobody there. So I was touched by the ghost. You don't need to be touched by a ghost to feel its cold chill. Early one evening, a startled young girl caught the attention of a veteran lighthouse volunteer. She and her family had seen an image of a lady in white up on the second catwalk of the lighthouse. The volunteer explained the lighthouse was locked and empty, but the young girl insisted there was someone on the tower. She seemed to think right away that it was a ghost that they had seen. Finally, when I heard footsteps myself when I was here alone, I became convinced that we really did have ghosts. On yet another night, the beacon unexpectedly went dark. An emergency call summoned the man in charge, accompanied by his wife. Well, that night, the light was reported extinguished. We got the call and we came back. And when we came up to the door, she said we'd locked somebody in. It was a man, uh, like an older man's voice, uh, a gruff voice. I said, no, there's nobody locked in there that I know of. The closer we got, the louder it was, yet my husband couldn't hear it. My main goal was just getting the light back on so the mariners could still steer by it. I said, well, there is somebody inside. They are frustrated. I can hear them, and they're not happy. We opened the door. and turned on the light and everything went silent again for her. I walked in and was just chilled, head to toe. I said, no, there's nobody, there's nobody in there. He found nothing, 
absolutely nothing. When I feel at this lighthouse, it's as if somebody's right behind me, but there's nobody there. It's kind of like somebody's whispering, somebody's chattering, but they're not there. <laughs> you know, it might be a touch, it might be a tug on your clothes. Just, there's all these subtle little things, but nothing concrete, you know? Nothing concrete. But if you allow your imagination to wander, what you'll find might be the real deal, or simply shades of lighthouse lore. The Naval Air Station and Museum are open to the public year-round, and the lighthouse can be toured during summer. Prospect Harbor is remote, even by Maine standards, about five hours north of Boston, nestled into the craggy sea coasts, just a few miles from the Canadian border. First lit in 1891, Prospect Harbor Lighthouse was established to help a large fleet of fishing boats navigate through the harbor. But its keeper's quarters is now used as a recreational facility for Navy personnel. They call it Gull Cottage, and for anyone who wants to be alone, this is the place. That's why guests come all this way, for privacy with no unexpected company at the door. But sometimes, strange visitors do show up. I would agree to speculate that the, the, the uh, spirit of the last lightkeeper probably exists here. If somebody does happen to hear something or see something that maybe happens without any rational, immediate explanation, don't rule it out. Amidst the solitude and the sea breezes, there's a presence here, and his name is Captain Salty. He's taking care of this place. He's, uh, if people hear things or they, they see things moving, that's who I would attribute it to. Dawn Perry manages Gull Cottage. She hears few complaints, but sometimes guests offer comments or ask questions, like what exactly is going on around here? I hear a lot of our guests comment about they heard door closing and it sounded like the closet door in the guest room or the door to the guest room. Lights coming on after they've turned all the lights off and gone to bed, which I don't doubt that they've heard and seen these things. They're very convincing to me when they describe it. We keep journals available to our guests um, here at the cottage for them to write their thoughts and their um, experiences down, not just about the hauntings, but just in general. Captain Salty visited us last night, moving two of the statues and closing doors. You could feel his presence in the air. Some beliefs can't be shaken, and one is that Captain Salty occasionally takes possession of three hand-carved wooden statues. They seem ordinary peering out to sea from a window high above the hallway. They do move. I know that. Nobody seems to know when they were placed there or who carved them. I tried to find that out. They'll be looking straight ahead or out toward the ocean. Then when you wake up in the morning, they'll be turned, each one, just the same amount of degrees, and they'll be looking toward shore. Janet Channel, herself a descendant of a Prospect Harbor lighthouse keeper, was once a guest here, sharing the cottage with a friend. She said, every time we come, we line the statues back up, just in case somebody has touched them. And she said, uh, they will move. When we wake up in the morning, they will move. And if a spirit that is restless in the universe plays with the figures, that's okay with me. I'm not ruling that out. Most people who have spent the night at Gull Cottage don't rule anything out and can't begin to explain it either. I would like to believe that there are, that there are ghosts, that they exist. Sure. It's a very romantic and, and nostalgic idea to think that it's not over when it's over, that you can come back and, and see things and see people. Guests here may always wonder who shares their cottage, who rattles around the bedrooms, and who moves the wooden carvings. If I were a ghost, this is a place I would pick. <laughs> 
Prospect Harbor Lighthouse is located on a naval base and not open to the public. But you can discover great views of the beacon on the beach road across the harbor. Coming next, a spooky woman in white and a dark shadowy figure roam the grounds at this spirited Florida lighthouse. I think this building is very old and there's a lot of history here. This is kind of like a castle, like in Europe, you know, an old castle with all the history behind it. We have our lighthouses. And like castles, lighthouses have their ghost stories. At Fairport Harbor, Ohio, on the eastern shore of Lake Erie, an easy hour's drive from Cleveland, there have always been plenty of lighthouse ghost tales to go around. So when strange things happen in this Great Lakes beacon, most people keep an open mind. Do I believe in ghosts? Well, there are a lot of things that happen that are unexplained at the lighthouse, so it could be. The legendary ghost of Fairport Harbor Lighthouse is not what you might expect. Prowling around this light station may be one of the most unusual ghosts you'll encounter anywhere. And it took a grisly discovery in the lighthouse basement to give the story flesh and bones. We were running some plumbing over to, uh, to the air conditioning system, crawled back in about three-fourths of the way in there. It was dark, you know, it was uh, a place that nobody had been for maybe 150 years. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was unusually frightening. I noticed something on the left side of my head. I turn just slightly to see what it was and there staring at me and my face was the face of a cat. It looked to me as if it was there for at least a hundred years. It, it was it was very old. The teeth were still intact. Its ears were up. It was indeed a cat. It's a bit, you know, spooky. What's going on here? Here's a mummified cat. And, you know, there's a story of a ghost cat that has circulated for so long. And needless to say, it really scared me. About a decade ago, Fairport Harbor Lighthouse took on a new curator. When she moved in, what she didn't know was that part of her job was to live with the unexpected. Nobody else really ever talked about it, so there wasn't like a feeling of there was a ghost here. There wasn't anything preconceived to me that there were going to be ghosts here in any way, shape, or form. I just did not expect it. It was about a year uh, before I actually saw the cat itself. Just kind of gray and more the tail and the rear end, and it just kind of dashed in front of me, and I just kind of stopped for a minute. That okay, maybe it was just something I'd, you know, I'm tired or something like that. I was coming from the boys' room and heading towards the living room, coming around the corner, and I saw the cat just right about there. Just knowing I didn't have an animal here, I was like, no, I can't be seeing this. Considering the age of the building, there had to have been spirit somehow attached to the building. And in this case, it was a cat. In nearly 200 years, the longest serving lighthouse keeper was Captain Joseph Babcock. But his tenure was plagued by hardship. Just months after he was appointed, Babcock's five-year-old son, Robbie, died in the lighthouse. Then his wife fell ill. While she was bedridden, he gave her several cats. And just before she died, her favorite one disappeared perhaps into the basement crawl space. And we think that might have been one of Mrs. Babcock's cats. And we don't know if that was one of the ghosts that has haunted our uh, dwelling for the past, must be 50 years at least. When they did find the mummified cat, it was, it was really quite a surprise, but it was kind of nice for me to realize that I wasn't, you know, I wasn't making this up in my mind that something had really been there. And we finally had physical proof of it too. And if the bizarre cat story isn't ghostly enough for Fairport Harbor, 
another presence may be lurking in the lighthouse, making itself known in a downstairs hallway. The only time I ever had forebodings and feelings was downstairs. The spirit that was downstairs, and he seemed to be very angry, whoever it was. You could feel anger down in the lower northeast corner. It could have been the child. There was a young boy who had died here at the home. He was the son of one of the, the last lighthouse keepers, and he died, we believe, of influenza. People have told me that at times when they're in here, they um, have an eerie feeling. Eerie is a word that people use a lot. Right in that hallway right there, it was just this eerie, creepy feeling. I don't even know how to describe what I was feeling. It just was just eerie. When I turned the corner, it was just, it just came all of a sudden. It feels like something passes through you almost. It was just a really, I guess you had to be there. I can't tell you whether it's haunted or not because I have never seen a ghost personally. And there are people that say that they have. I really wanted to get out of the lighthouse. I'm very convinced it was a ghost. Definitely it was a ghost. Is this place haunted? You can draw your own conclusions. And make up your own mind. Fairport Harbor Lighthouse on the Lake Erie shore of Ohio welcomes all curious visitors to its historic tower every weekend during summer. South of Camden is Marshall Point Lighthouse, where in the movie Forrest Gump ended his cross-country run. A legend that persists here has the ghost of a murdered teenage boy on the prowl perhaps seeking revenge. As we draw closer to Owl's Head, we see Breakwater Lighthouse. At its doorstep, a mile of granite blocks discourages most visitors, and no ghosts allowed. Lighthouses are beacons of safety, but a lighthouse can harbor a darker side, a secret history, a touch of mystery, a glimpse into the unknown, or encounter with the unknowable. What's real and what's imagined? You may always question what you see after your experience with America's haunted lighthouses. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share to keep fascinating content coming here at Nightmare Nexus.